A quiet night at home alone. It's those moments when you're in the mood for a good scare. A perfect night for a scary movie, a show, or games. What game will you immerse yourself in this night? There's a couple of games today that I think do a great job taking you to their world. For adrenaline, there are games like Resident Evil, Dead Space, and Outlast. Or would you rather play a game that has that simmering, at times relaxing sense of fear? Which game are you thinking of? Oh, were you talking to me? Uh, yeah, who else? Uh, I mean, I, I assume you were talking to your doll. Well, in that case, I actually prefer uh, horror games that have that weird like sense of discomfort and hopelessness. Coming across something that should be familiar to you and noticing that there's something wrong and being unable to fully explain it. I mean, one should have a way to defend oneself and be able to solve the problem, but the sense of dread and the feeling that we may be in our heads. The feeling of floating hope. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for in a horror game. Games like Resident Evil 4 or Death Space 2 are fantastic and all, but I don't really consider them horror games. Leon S. Kennedy and Isaac Clarke are too much of a badass, you know? That the stuff that's happening around them is merely an inconvenience. I want to feel weak, but not completely helpless. I want to feel... I want to feel like a Japanese girl with a camera. Fighting ghosts. <laughs> okay. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, you mean Fatal Frame. Reflecting back, I remember people used to say that the scariest game to play alone was Fatal Frame. More specifically, the second game in the series. I even remember watching a movie long ago that had mentioned it to be so. Maybe we'll talk about that movie some other time. If you die in the game, you die for real. Being scared of ghosts and all haunted locales were a lot more prevalent just a few years back. Or so it feels like to me. The fear of falling into a curse. Movies still reflect that fear more than games do at the moment. I personally have stopped fearing ghosts after I had become one myself. Hi, it's Joe Bellum. How can I help you? It's Bateman, Patrick Bateman. <laughs> You're my lawyer, so I think you should know I've killed a lot of people. Oh, Unless we're talking about the indie space, I don't think ghosts have been a key focus of games recently. Even before, Fatal Frame as a series didn't feel quite like it reached the same levels of the other horror games. It's been left in the dust by the likes of Resident Evil and Silent Hill. Now we have Outlast, Dead Space, and Fear, I guess. That one has ghosts and stuff. Fear, I believe, was even influenced by Fatal Frame at some point. I, I think Fear is dead, dude. <laughs> With Indy... <laughs> With Indy, we have Chilla's art games, big hits like Five Nights at Freddy's, and finally, back to Ghosts with Phasmophobia. I guess ghosts are still scary in the indie space. My point is, I feel like Fatal Frame should be among the other popular series, but it's not quite there. It's bigger than many cult favorites, but not big enough to sit on the podium with the likes of Resident Evil and Silent Hill. As for Silent Hill, we are only talking about the first four games, right? Especially four, since that game actually had ghosts in it. Uh, the ones after that are pretty meh. They are often regarded as worse than the new Fatal Frame games, excluding Spare Camera. Honestly, the fear of ghosts will never leave, but seeing them everywhere in media kind of makes them just one of many mascots of the General Mills Monster Zero mascots. Hey, you guys want to see a picture of a real ghost? Can I please just tell the story, alright? I feel like there's always a small resurgence of people talking about the Fatal Frame series, especially with the re-release of them. Dandy and I are always nostalgic about their series. Why not talk about it? I want to particularly talk about Fatal Frame 4, Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. Why do you bring up Fatal Frame 4 instead of the others? Because it's the most set apart from the others. Uh, but at the same time, it is the game which the newer games are based off. Like Fatal Frame 5 and Fatal Frame 2 Remake. For the Wii. That's a ghost. Also, it's where it chronologically takes place uh, first. Yeah, it's a prequel to the first game. We like, which I, I guess you have to learn about it off. Like something else. I don't think it said so in, like, in the actual game. But it said so like in like supplemental reading like art books i don't know all i know is it's a prequel to the first one i don't know what people say it. or maybe because it's go off dates i'm not 100 sure probably dates 
Anyways, it's also Reddit T. Like, it's the only one that's Reddit T. Maybe Spirit Camera? But uh, who, who cares about Spirit Camera? Uh, to me, at least, it also shows the most potential. It lays the, the groundwork for the future. Well, some fans like to point out the Fatal Frame 4 as the beginning of the decline in the series. But I think commercially, it was more likely the lack of support it had in the West at the time. Some may find it lacking because of the change from fixed camera to over-the-shoulder gameplay. Because it essentially removes scares that you would see in previous games. And not to mention that odd use of motion controls. All valid criticisms, but personally, I think those ideas can work well if it's executed properly. Well, the reason as to why I bring up Fatal Frame 4 is that I think it encapsulates my biggest pet peeve of the series as a whole. Potential. Every game had the potential to bring in more folklore and urban legends into the mix without seeming out of place. For example, in this game you are in a hospital on a spooky island that prevents spirits from leaving, resulting in an increase in paranormal activity. This place should be a hodgepodge of all kinds of paranormal activity, but they only show just one type of spirit, the generic ghost and regular nurses. There is no real variety of a ghost. You assume that a haunted hospital will have all manner of terrifying apparitions that will display a variety of injuries and illnesses, but they don't. That gameplay also hints of something better, but it never feels realized to me. The story is also the most unique in the series, but at the same time, it is very similar. So much could have been done to improve the game overall, and none of it seems impossible to do so. I want to do a quick TLDR of the game. The story in the game is about three surviving girls of a failed ritual called the Ragetsu Kagura have no memory of their past after they moved away from the island they lived on. One of them wishing to return, Masaki, brings her friend and other survivor named Madoka back in the hopes of getting their memories back. The last survivor named Ruka soon follows after. He also plays a detective dude named Shoshiro, who had rescued the girls in the past, discovering them just underground of the hospital where the game takes place. We learn more about the curse that plagued the island, the blooming, caused by a paranormal condition they refer to as the Moonlight Syndrome, where the hospital treated patients that had it and looked for a cure. The effects of the curse made the victim's face blurred and blooming like petals on a flower. The moon plays a significant role in the game, alongside the masks used during the Kagura dance. The purpose and significance of the masks really remind me of the roots of Halloween. While the other games take place in older traditional villages using yellows and brown tones, this game utilizes cooler blue tones, taken from the rays of the moonlight. Suda51 also had a part in this development. In fact, the book art of Grasshopper Manufacture has some of the game's concept art and Suda thoughts about the game. You can even see some of the influence the game left on Suda and his other works. If you're interested in a deeper dive, there are a couple more comprehensive videos on YouTube that talk about the game and the series as a whole very thoroughly. I even encourage you to check out the re-release of this game. Now on Steam! Or where Dandy played it on Switch. And where I played it on PlayStation. You could tell the game was intended on Wii, where the game first released in Japan. Some of the textures look a bit low quality, and some of the audio stands out on the re-release. <laughs> which was the original audio that came out on the Wii Control, which I think was an awesome idea. On Switch, when you use the camera obscura, you can move it around in handheld mode just like an actual camera. On PlayStation, there is limited gyro controls. Similar to the original on Wii, you can move the camera up and down with gyro controls and everything else with the control stick. In the original on Wii, I believe that you only use left and right with the control stick and then you can move up and down with the motion controls. On the re-release, you can move the camera with the right control stick. To ensure the player had an easier time with the unique control scheme, they added a hard lock on button. And while exploring, the character's control feels a bit awkward at first but it does grow on you over the course of the playthrough. However, whenever I bring up the camera obscura, but turn quickly and move around a lot, the trigger doesn't feel responsive and can get a bit annoying during combat or when specters appear. It's annoying, but not too terrible because the game is not very punishing either way. What I would really want to talk about is going back to why you wanted to talk about Fatal Frame 4. Potential. Mainly about how the series can improve and what can the future of Fatal Frame look like. Regardless of what the director has mentioned for now, let's brainstorm ourselves. Let's start with the setting. I think a modern take will be refreshing for the series, taking place in an urban environment. Or 
they can go back to the old time when that camera obscura was just made and being texted by Dr. Aso. If playing as Dr. Aso is too much of a taboo because he's not a female protagonist, uh, then you could consider it a spin off instead. Since the setting would take in a much older past, they can add yokai or their own creepier tanks on them. Just imagine walking through the forest and being jumped by a big ass skeleton. Hell yeah. If having women as a protagonist is such a big concern, then they can add a bunch of women as secondary playable characters or main supporting cast. I think there's a couple of reasons why the series has chosen women as the protagonist. Besides sharing the similarities with the trope of the final girl, other reasons are the horrors women have to endure by the hand of men, and their portrayal of vulnerability, and the gaming reason of having eye candy. <laughs> the eye candy part is absolutely correct, as pretty much every single female character can be a model. As for the horrors women have to endure by the hand of man part, eh, I don't believe so. Do you mean man or men? Well, uh, both? In the Fellow Frame series, women do not suffer because of men, with the exception of Fellow Frame 4 to an extent. It is not the sole reason as to what is happening. In most of the games, they suffer because they were chosen by the culture, their family, village, etc., to undergo a torturous ritual, which then fails because the women find the will to live at its most crucial moment. They are not allowed to live a normal life. Women do get the short end of the stick, being the embodiment and representation of the curses in the games. Regardless, if they want the game to be a mainline game, they can make connections to the other games by having stages where Dr. Also goes to known lower locations pre or post calamities. This might pose some continuity errors, but we all know that the writers do not care. No more botched rituals and sacrificial maidens, please. How about we go back to the idea of an urban setting? Fatal Frame 3 and 5 had a touch of what I would like more of. Bit similar to Silent Hill 4. I want that uncomfortable fear of having nowhere to hide, even in what is supposed to be your safest intimate place. Having smaller interactive narrative moments in the house or apartment, roaming through the files in the computer, solving puzzles and finding where to go next, all while the feeling of something watching hovers over you. Most of the gameplay can take place outside the room, but not in a dream like in Fatal Frame 3. Literally, the action can start right outside of your room. There's nothing scarier than taking out the comfort of the familiar. The setting is just a small piece of town or city. There are so many games I can see inspiration from. Horrors of taking place in your room like... Welcome to the game, Medicine, The Mortuary Assistant, and PT. When exploring to other locations, there is games like Outlast, Condemned, Evil Within 2, Resident Evil 2 and 3, while also taking elements from Fatal Frame 2. In that game, there were different smaller sections of buildings to explore, preventing the need of backtracking the same location too much. Story-wise, the protagonist is isolated in her room during the day because she was inflicted by a terrible curse that haunts her, and it can spread to other people she comes in contact with. For example, the curse can be something in the vein of spreading it like a disease, like the ring, or it follows. Maybe just entering her room can cause a curse like in Juan or Disney's Haunted Mansion. Wait. I should warn you, before you step inside the house, this could change the course of your entire life. Fatal Frame 4 has a curse that spreads already. We can elaborate more on the idea, basically. Let's picture it. Being locked in her room to prevent others from coming into contact with her. It can narratively take place during the day, where she sends and receives calls from friends and ghosts, having premonitions and illusions of many kinds by the windows and doors. During the night, she can explore outside her room through the hallways, streets and alleys to find a way to clear herself of the curse. The problem with having a modern setting is that the creator of Federal Frame wants the folklore aspect to be a huge component of the game. That is why you find many books and notes in the games regarding to what's going on. Being too modern might pose some challenges that might get in the way of the folklore angle of it. What if you take the folklore angle into an urban setting? The curse will be rooted in folklore, and the player will need to find an answer through the old folklore scripts either through searching the web or opening emails and messages. There can also be an inclusion of the camera being used to navigate certain areas in Fatal Frame, having interesting first person experiences and scares. <laughs> Actually, what if the camera can start as her phone? You mean like... Dread Out? What? Dread Out. Never heard of it. Mm, well... The ammunition could be a limited charge on the phone. The flash in her phone will be the impact that prevents the ghost from harming her. Or it can be the flashlight or a bit of both. 
The phones light as a flashlight during the third person and zoom in with the phone's camera to find hidden ghosts in first person. That's literally just dread out. Well, well, uh, or actually the staple camera obscura could be brought back earlier in the game, but after some time to get players accustomed to using the phone and then the camera obscura during the dangerous ghost encounters. There could be a story reason for the phone's camera to work against the ghost, or the phone is just primarily a tool used to communicate and send messages to others that can help you throughout your journey, using it for its utility and the camera obscura as your main weapon. The maps can be a combination of exploration in the streets and small locales. For example, traveling from your home's hallways and through the streets, alleys and parks and then smaller more focused sections like in museums, schools and parks. And later on, the curse starts to affect others throughout her apartment complex, expanding areas she can explore on the building itself, becoming at times more chaotic and evil dead rise like, maybe a tinge of wreck and sweet home. This will also be new in the series, having a lot more people involved. This could give us more characters to care about, as we learn more about them during the day sections and later night sections. I know there are the spirit stones you use to improve the camera, but if we go the cell phone camera route, instead we could find remedies or essence that can improve the character's chakra or improve her abilities to fight off ghosts. The story in Islands will unravel why the protagonist is being hunted and learns that there is no true cure for the curse but he's able to find a way to live with the burden without bringing harm to others. This one can tackle themes of mistrust, paranoia, and social anxiety. It can be a blend of paranormal horror with real life psychological hardship. With the paranoia, the game can show small hints of the presence of ghosts, but not making it too obvious. If handled correctly, it might make the player paranoid about a ghost encounter that might appear, but doesn't. They can also take a gamble and branch off into yokai and other spooky Japanese folklore. I think hunting yokai in urban lenses will be fun to witness while roaming the streets at night or when you're looking out the window. In early Fatal Friend, they would do subtle audio distortions when the ghost would be nearby, adding this unnerving feeling without you noticing at the time. Techniques like that should definitely come into consideration. Taking advantage of the stereo settings or headphones to a distant moan or whisper, subtle steps and shuffles, an atmospheric soundtrack that bends and distorts during the key moments. In Fatal Frame, the story and cutscenes are portrayed like Japanese horror flicks. Though I appreciate them, I would like the moments where the ghosts jump out to be more subtle. Those jumps will appear with loud sound effects, even if they're just instrumentals. I would rather have them be something that will take a second to notice, letting the horror sink in and vanish once you realize it's there. Fatal Frame 4 has some good examples of this, but they are a few and far between. The combat should be closer to what worked in Fatal Frame 5. With most consoles having controls with some gyro or motion sensitivity, you can move and turn the controller and have the camera mimic your motions, just like in Splatoon. To break it down, a fun take that we would like to see in future installments will be something a bit more unique from the rest of the series. Either doubling down on the series lore, taking place in the time with the creator of the camera obscura Dr. Azo and his life in the paranormal or a modern setting where the protagonist is hunted by a deadly curse, having modern tools like a computer or phone, borrowing some elements from analog horror, a bigger scale in terms of locales that can take place in a town or city, a supporting cast of characters that will mainly aid you towards your goals, and both ideas can implement more representation of famous spirits from Japan. The camera combat can overall play like a mix of Fatal Frame 2 and 5, and the exploration can take advantage of eerie sound designs and tricks with impressive soundtracks heard from previous titles. And lastly, having good balance between third and first person views to explore and find secrets. Fatal Friends still has a lot of unique potential we would like to see. I may have set many hopes and expectations very high, but I do appreciate the series and so does Dandy, and we wish it the best. Well, that's that. If you're a Fatal Frame fan, let us know what you think. Tell us what you think the next time of the game should be like. And thank you for watching, Mom. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and thanks for any of you who watch this. Just tell us anything you would like. And with that, I'm Hex Heaven's Haunting Ghost, Joe Bellum. And I'm the Flyless Monstrosity, Dandy. See you later. Oh, see you later. I don't know, not yet. I don't know what.